Hello, creepos, and welcome back to downloadable content. And oh, what? Do you hear that? It sounds like it's Monday because it's Mod, Mod Showcase, Showcase Monday. Monday. This week is Fan Tabuloso because I get to show you you twelve mods that actually work. Don't go anywhere because these are coming at you fast. First up is the NPC Spawner spell by Talion. The cool thing now in your actual um, menu map, you have a mod section, which is a built-in mod like manager itself where you can change things. So right here is you select the actual enemy you want to spawn, select the spell itself, hold it, and then you can use the grip and trigger to swap between friendly, dummy, or an enemy. And we can just keep on summoning them anywhere you want. And there you go. That is your summoning spell. Up next is Death Beam by Genix. Let's go into our spell wheel and select the Death Beam right here. Hold your grip to charge it up, point where you want to go, and then press the trigger to fire a laser. Alternatively, you can also press and hold the spell use button while firing the laser to make things explode. Now, because it's U12, there's other implications like, can we blow things up? And the answer is, well, yes. Let's put this you know, little ceramic mug thing right there. Cup, yeah, it's called a cup. Aim, and now let's fire. Get ready to die, cup. <laughs> yeah, it exploded. Moving on, we have the Yamato by Genix with Sheath Framework by Hugh Johnner. An absolute fan favorite, the Yamato is super amazing in its own right. And it's also enhanced because of Hugh Johnner's sheath framework look at this it just feels so right unsheathing the blade like this and let's not forget the yamato is so powerful expertly crafted is super sharp and has amazing abilities like sword beams we can fire little daggers as well by doing the trigger and use the spell use button to jump around with this and also we can jump through things it's fantastic with the blade sheath and where you're looking, hold the trigger and sheath and unsheath real quick. And you go boom, 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 boom. It's amazing. And last but not least is Judgment's End Cut, where you hold the trigger grip and spell use button while you pull the sword out and get all these amazing looking slashes. Anything in your path will be destroyed. Last but not least with the Yamato is my absolute favorite thing to do in U12 right now. That is to use the anime slash where you press and hold the use button while you're cutting through something like this. Ready? Hua! Hiya! Now, it looks like I didn't cut. It looks like I absolutely failed. But when I release it and sheath, well, ultimate anime death for the child of the table god. Moving on is Realistic Bleeding by Janako. This one's pretty straightforward, but when you do damage to an NPC with a blade or blunt or anything like that, it's going to bleed. It's going to drip blood everywhere. I'm sure you've seen this before, but I just wanted to show you that it's working in this one. One of my all-time favorite mods. Up next is the Explosive Spell by Genix. Go into your spell wheel and select a little explosion right here. But be careful because it's really powerful. Aim where you're going and do the trigger for... Boom! Look at that one. Bam! It's even a great utility to get around. You could be, you know, like, um... Uh, Blammy Explosion Man from My Hero. My Bakugo. <laughs> it's really cool. So, as I wait for the Wings mod, this is really how I've been getting around the island. And once again, because it's U12, there's other implications. Prepare yourself, Barrel, for a Dragon Ball Z demise! Ah! Yeah, it... it died. Moving on is Zendatsu by Genix. Zendatsu right now starts off as a spell that you have to wield, but if you go into your little menu page right here and go to Zendatsu, you can customize it to your liking. For me, I turn off blue tint, and I turn off the spines. You could turn off slow motion requirement and the spell requirement to make sure it's always on if you like that. So what I'm going to do is select it and cast it. And now I'm going to need a friendly volunteer. And why not show you with the beautiful Yamato? So of course you can dismember wherever you want, but now when I go into slow motion and chop the torso, he embarrasses me and it fails immediately. All right. It's time for you to get anime killed. All right, tell me if this looks cool right now. Did he get cut in half? Damn it! Yeah! <laughs> there we go. Zendatsu enables you to cut them in half down the middle and also by the hip as well. It might make it easier with the sword beam. There you go. Hwa! 
Now's the perfect time for me to show you the next mod, and that's the Destructo Disc, also by Genix. Find it in your spell wheel, looks like a Destructo Disc from Dragon Ball. Hold the trigger to cast it, and then throw it kind of like a claw. It's gonna go wherever like you release it, so you can cast it overhand, underhand, sidehand. It is very cool. And if you cast it on a normal meatball guy, obliterated. But remember, if we mix that with Genix's other spell, like Zendatsu, it works out great. Up next is Lift Anywhere by Pipop101. Lift Anywhere is an amazing quality of life mod. I'm surprised it's not built into the main game, but this is how it works. Normally in Blade and Sorcery, you can really only lift someone starting from the neck for some reason, and then you could pick them up. But Lift Anywhere means I could lift them up by their head without them falling off. So I, I, I always forget that this isn't a main feature of the game, and when I was playing around with U12, I was grabbing them by their shoulders and they were like falling. I'm like, what the hell? But Lift Anywhere literally lets you lift them anywhere without having to let go. It, you absolutely need this. If you don't have it, you're missing out. Go download it now! Moving on is the flip spell by Genix. Without the spell wheel enhancer right now, it's kind of hard when you um, have a bunch of these other ones. But for me, it's located on the bottom right here. And when you're moving and then jump, you're going to do the trigger to actually flip. Now, I've customized mine, so I flip a little bit slower, so it looks a little bit more quote-unquote realistic for me. So I could be like, whoo, flip and land, you know, without throwing up. Here's what it looks like for you guys. Hook ya! Yeah! How'd I look? That looked pretty cool, right? Now, if you play your cards right, you could also Hollywood movie style make this look awesome. Check out the sick parkour trick. Check this trick out. Parkour. I bet that looks sick. I feel like I nailed that. But the flip spell is super fun to mess around with. You can like do crazy things in combat, not in combat. It's just sick. You can do side flips, back flips, kind of, you know, pick your poison here, but you know, try not to throw up. Up next is Electric Hands by Grimajow. Imagine you're playing around with your friend on the beach. Oh no, an accident. What could have happened? No matter, we have electric hands. What you'll do is go ahead and select the normal electricity spell. And you're going to grab your poor unfortunate friend. Remove anything that has made his accident more unfortunate. Then grab him. What you're going to do while holding on to him is use the normal electricity to, you know, shock his body. And then you're going to use your spell use button afterwards. So... Electrify, spell use button. And don't worry, he'll come back to the land of the living. Hope is not lost. Our man will be back in one second. There you go. Good as new. Hey, bud, how you feel? Good as new. <laughs> he, he looks normal. Let's just, that's the electric hands one. You can bring people back from accidents. Up next is Armament Hockey by Genix. This one's really cool because it really enhances your melee combat. And when I mean melee, I mean hand to hand. What you do is you go into your spell wheel and find, I believe it's this one. Like I said, it's hard when they have the same ruins. But you select this one and then you cast it. And it's going to change the color of your hand. Not this hand. This hand's already pretty dark. But I, I cast on this hand. I mean, I can cast it on this hand as well. And we'll hear it. Here we go. But what this does, it turns my arms into like actual weapons so I can block enemies' attacks. Huh. Huh. <laughs> it's really powerful. Bring it on, block. Mash your face in. It's just... Gah! So powerful. <laughs> Boom in your face and then... Gah! <laughs> Yeah, so if you're looking to do some hand-to-hand -hand stuff, use Armament Hockey because you could do an amazing, you know, dungeon run just by using these alone because you could block weapons. Our penultimate entry today is Exploding Fireballs by Genix. Now, this one's also pretty straightforward. It actually takes place of your normal fireball, so keep that in mind. Go to your spell wheel and select the normal fireball. Charge it up like you would, cast, but when it hits things, it's going to... Boom! Very fun one. And remember, because it's U12, there's other implications. Let's take another one of these barrels. And we're going to bring it all the way over here for some uh, target practice. There you go, Mr. Barrel. You stay right there. And I will stand all the way over here. So what I'll do, charge up a massive fireball. And then we destroy the barrel. Huh! Boom! That's right. Our final mod this week is the Dungeon Room Selector by Hugh Jonner. 
Now this mod is quickly becoming one of my favorites because it lets me select any level of my choosing in the outpost. You go to your map and you don't go to outpost. You go to outpost rooms and click on that one, then move over here. You can select the amount of numbers of NPCs on there, but the most important part is right here. You can see if it's connected or not connected. I leave that as true, but we can select whatever we want. So if I wanted to go to the water mill, I easily can. It's all in here. The lighthouse, boom. Let, let's let's go to the lighthouse, travel. You know what I just thought? I probably shouldn't have selected the lighthouse because that's a starting point. Don't worry, let, let me show you a different one. Let's go to the water mill. There we go. Started us off in a spooky cave, but that's okay. I'm gonna bring you guys to the water mill because I chose this level for us. And there's some daylight. Let's just blow this out. <gasps> and look, we get to just be in this glorious room. You can choose any of the rooms now in the dungeon. So if you have a favorite one that you wanna hang out in, you can do it here. Keep in mind there's no weapon book and there's no um, uh, wave spawner book because they're dungeon level so don't expect there to be that so either bring weapons you want in with you or pick up other ones you can choose the enemies going into it but also there's the NPC spawner spell remember where you too can just spawn in any minis as you like I just love being able to just you know hang out wherever I want and just straight up chill sometimes I just want to chill in blade and sorcery and this is ah, so relaxing I said it's so relaxing. Well, my friends, that is it for this week's Mod Showcase Monday. I hope you had a ton of fun. Remember, these are all for U12, and you no longer need to click a link. I will still provide them in the description, but these all can be installed right from the in-game mod manager. That's right, we have an in-game mod manager right now, so you can just go boop, type it in, and download. Anyway, if you're new to downloadable content, why not consider subscribing? It's free. All you have to do is click the subscribe button and join up, and I will greatly appreciate it. Special thank you and shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting your local lunatic like me. But other than that, thank you all so much for stopping by. I'm Rob from Downloadable Content, and I will see you next time.